Tesla Shanghai just reported over 72,000 vehicle deliveries in just October. Now, if we compare that to last year, October is pretty much the same. And the reason for that is because all of Q3, Tesla was upgrading all the four factories, including Shanghai. So if we didn't have the upgrades, Tesla would have delivered over 80,000, potentially even hitting 90,000 in that month alone. Sheesh! But you guys already know what quarter of the year is. It's a new quarter, Q4. And every single month, we look at what the deliveries could be for all of Q4, month by month, factory by factory, as well as the stock price. And that's exactly what we're going to do for Q4. So if you guys already, man, smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's go. Here is the production and delivery prediction for Tesla every single month by every single factory. You'll find this on Patreon, which you guys can get access to in the card in the corner, support level and above. You guys can change whatever you want and play around with the numbers and all that good stuff. So let's start off with Shanghai. In Shanghai, in Q3, Tesla reported that Tesla can produce almost a million vehicles. And we already knew that, but now they're confirming that they can. If we divide that by 365 days, it's about 2,600 vehicles produced daily, which I have between 2600 to 3000 and they can go up to 3000 if they really want to nonetheless in october there's already delivery numbers we don't have production numbers yet if you guys know what the production numbers are for october in shanghai comment down below because that'll help me a lot but going to november there's currently 30 days in november and taking a conservative vehicle delivery on a daily production 2600 multiply that by 30 we get 78,000 vehicle productions in december same thing but with 31 days and we get all over 80,000 vehicles produced that's about almost 159,000 vehicles excluding october so november and december together is almost 159,000 vehicles sheesh moment right there in fremont they do about 1700 vehicles daily in production and for october for 31 days there was no holidays no nothing multiply that by 1700 we get almost 53,000 vehicles but in november in the united states and california there's veterans day for november and thanksgiving and they're off for, for for those two days so if you subtract two days it's 28 days multiply that by 1700 that's almost 48,000 vehicle production produced in december there's 31 days but subtract one day because of the christmas Everyone's off on Christmas. So 30 days, multiply that by 1,700, that's 51,000 vehicles produced. Overall, over 151,000 vehicles produced in all of Q4 in the Fremont factory. Moving on to Berlin. Now, Berlin and Austin as well, they're stuck at the 5,000 weekly, but I do expect them to reach 6,000 weekly productions I mean, sometime this month, but for this prediction, I brought it to December just to stay more conservative. For Berlin, to stay conservative, I did 750 vehicles produced daily, which is less than 5,000 week vehicles weekly, but keep it conservative. 700 vehicles produced daily, multiplied by 31 days in October, because they had no days off in October. That's over 23,000 vehicles. In November, they also had no days off, but I increased it by 50 vehicles produced addition to 750 to 800 vehicles produced daily, and we get 24 thousand vehicles and in december i do think that they will reach at least six thousand again i think it's going to be sometime this month they'll reach six thousand weekly but pushing to december to stay conservative 850 vehicles multiply that by 30 days because you do have christmas day off that's about twenty five and a half thousand vehicles produced overall almost seventy three thousand vehicles produced in q4 alone in berlin which is a sheesh moment right there in texas 750 vehicles produced multiply that by 31 days that's twenty three thousand two hundred fifty vehicles in november they got two days off again because of veterans day and thanksgiving that's just a little over twenty two thousand in vehicles produced and in december same thing as Berlin 30 days 850 vehicles 25 and a half a thousand overall in Q4 slightly just a little bit less than Berlin overall total production is excluding October of Shanghai because we don't have that data yet almost reaching 454,000 vehicles delivery rate I'm going to put 95% based on this because most likely in October for Shanghai, they produce around 80,000 vehicles, somewhere around that ballpark. That would mean the total production would be actually in the 530s, 540,000 vehicles for Q4, which is absolutely insane. You may say that's insane, but take a look at Q2 production, 480,000, and that was with no shutdowns for upgrades or anything like that. So if they can do that in Q2, and if you add all the new upgrades they did in Q3, imagine how Q4 is going to be. It's going to be absolutely 
in flipping sane. So nonetheless, 95% delivery rate of that. We get over 503,225 vehicle deliveries, which if they do that, that means Tesla is now delivering more than 2 million vehicles annually as a run rate, which is just absolutely in flippant insane. Adding on to the full year of 2023, we get over 1.8 million vehicle deliveries. The exact numbers here on the screen, as you guys can see, which is an absolutely a sheesh moment. Now, let's go see what the stock price would be. Obviously, all this will be updated next month when Shanghai comes out with their November delivery numbers. Things will change, obviously. But let's go see what Q4 stock price would be. If you guys are ready, man, then why isn't that like button smash, man? Come on, man. Let's go. So just a quick recap on this chart. Again, this chart is available on Patreon as well. You guys can click on the link here and get access to it. But a few things to keep note is that this year, 2023, has been very brutal for Tesla when it comes to price cuts. They went from 44, almost 45,000 average selling price to Q3 of just almost reaching just below 43,000 and I'm guessing for Q4 they'll go below 42 and a half despite the Cybertruck and the Highland all that kind of stuff just keep you conservative but what's even more crazier is that the gross profits for vehicles from 18.3 percent to 15.7 percent that's insane but that shows that Tesla has the pricing power to do that now in Q4 I am expecting 16 percent again because of the Cybertruck that's going to be a cash furnace for Tesla but then also we have the Highland as well that can bring the margins even higher so I'm in between these two levers if you guys want to you know say but I'm also putting in the weight that they have economy at scale now I mean over 500,000 vehicle deliveries that's going to really help bring the cogs per each vehicle even lower than what it was I mean we saw in Q3 even with less deliveries come and production than in Q2, they still brought down cogs per each vehicle, which is absolutely insane. Imagine what's going to happen in Q4 when we have over 500,000 vehicles delivered. That's going to be absolutely insane. Nonetheless, I put the vehicle gross profits for Q4 at 16%. We'll play around with this number as soon as we put in the number here so we can see everything. But take a look at energy. I expect it to be around 2 billion in Q4, but I brought it down to 1.75 and profits to over 400 million dollars now this could surprise us this could be actually closer to 450 million but again not putting my hopes high like i did in q3 i mean in q3 i said they're gonna do what q4 is doing but profits was in the low 300s but darn look at that almost reaching 400 million which is absolutely phenomenal and i do expect this to continue in q4 as well operating costs will be higher taxes will be higher other income and interest will be at 500 million because i'm pretty sure that stack of cash that they got is in high interest savings or at least bond or something like that so you can at least earn something while just sitting there doing nothing most likely a high savings account around four or five percent that's that's a lot of interest stock based compensation of 450 million and shares outstanding is being diluted year over year right now the street is estimating 71 cents so let's see if we can beat 71 cents all right you ready smash that like button 503,225 vehicles and bam Look at all that numbers comes in. I love it. Right off the bat, we got total vehicle revenue beating Q3, Q2, and Q1. Over $21 billion. Really, really good. We got vehicle profits. Beating Q3, not beating Q2, and not beating Q1. So this is going to be, in terms of vehicle gross profits, Q4 is going to be the second worst in this quarter. Nonetheless, let's keep moving forward. We've got the total gap gross margin to 17.5%, so even less than Q3. That is a sheesh moment right there because the total revenue being over $26 billion, again, beating all the quarters in 2023. Income from operations beating Q3, but not Q2 or Q1. Operating margin is continuing to go down. I put this on Twitter when I was making these calculations, which is absolutely insane. Even with 16% vehicle gross profits and over 500,000 vehicle deliveries, we're still getting operating margin. Don't worry, we have, that means it hasn't bottomed yet. That means that's not good for the stock. But anyways, I, there's some interesting things here. The net income gap, as well as non-gap, is more than Q3s, which is pretty insane. So we're, we're having a lower operating margin, but we're increasing profits, gap and non-gap, which is really interesting to see. Even though margins are lower, they are making more money. Now that's that's pretty interesting. If we see that, I think they would be an interesting shift or an interesting view for Tesla. But again, the main number here is operating margin, 7.1%. That means Tesla has not bottomed 
in their margins. Maybe they bought them in Q4, maybe another one quarter or two quarters to go. And it looks like for 2023, Tesla is not hitting the 100 billion mark in 2023. So that part is actually a sheesh one because everybody thinks that they're on track to hit 100 billion dollars but based on this estimation alone looks like they're going to be off by a couple billion dollars so that is insane uh net income 9.1 down from 12 and a half compared to 2022 which is not bad with all the price cuts they did they still did made over 9 billion dollars in profits absolutely insane eps non-gap 73 cents the street says 71 cents. So that's hilariously a beat. That's that's a beat. That's hilarious. So that's cool. We're still getting a beat at least. Now let's play around with the vehicle gross profits here because I know the Highland will make a difference. The Cybertruck, they won't be in a massive, massive in production yet. In, in 2024, they will be. But right now, they're just starting to. So I don't think it'll have much effect in Q4. So if we want to match what we have as the operating margin in Q3, we got to have a operating margin of about 16.6 percent to get that and if we do that if we get the same operating margin as last quarter of q3 then this will be a very good sign the stock will actually go up and say okay well, it looks like we've bottomed in this quarter at least but keeping things conservative you know and keeping it i guess more of a bearish view even though i'm all in a tesla stock i'm not a bear at all let's look at it at 16 percent all right and let's see what the stock price would be right now tesla stock is trading in the 220 mark that would mean they would we would need to have a pe of around 84 83 to have the same stock price as q3 if you ask me 84 pe is pretty big but if we are looking forward and everyone's optimistic and we are expecting price cuts let's say i don't know nine months from now which would be six months from the Q4 earnings reports, and we got the Cybertruck in mass production, and there's like a lot of hype and buzz. We can probably see the stock price or the PE reaching around the hundred in the 260s, and it could potentially, potentially go as high as 115, around 300 mark, maybe even 315 around there. Keeping all speculation, no idea at the moment, but if things are turning to be worse and you know the bears are back out full swing and it looks like we're not gonna get the price cuts and the cyber trade is taking more of a hit and tesla reduces prices even more we can probably see a pe going down in the 70s reaching the 184s possibly in the 170s and if you want to get really bearish here 150s and 158 maybe in the you know 150s around there 145 we could actually reach around there but nonetheless i'm going to keep it in the middle around 90 pe heck 100 pe because 260 260 is my price target for tesla in 2023 even though that hit that mark 12 times this year I'm still going to stick to that. So I know 100 PE looks a lot, but for Tesla, if we put in everything that's going to happen to it and with the Cybertruck and the interest rate cuts, and then we have the FSD and version 12 and so many other catalysts that's coming for Tesla, definitely 100 PE. I don't see why that shouldn't be the case by end of Q4, which by the way, end of Q4 is January 21st of 2024 between April 20th and 2024. I do think we will see some light at the end of the tunnel at that time that's what i think so realistic price ranges from now till end of this year right i'm not even talking about until when q4 comes out which would be beginning of 2024 i'm gonna say i know 260 is my stock price i'm gonna say 250 all right that's the realistic price ranges or just price tesla could be trading around that time 250 again could go as high as 300 but uh, I'm not a trader. I have no idea what the stock's going to be today, tomorrow, based on this analysis, which we'll come back and redo again next month as well. These are the numbers that I'm getting at the moment. Now, obviously, we're not in it for the short term, guys, right? We're not in it to see what's going to happen next quarter or the quarter after that. We've been done. We've, we've been through that so many times that we know that test is a long term investment, not a one quarter, two quarter. As we just saw, quarter four could be a lower margin than Q3. So we can expect the stock maybe even go down or even trade even at a higher premium for the short term until earnings can justify it, which I do think they will justify it as we continue going forward. But what we ought to be doing is seeing what the stock price would be by 20 flipping 30. And you guys can check the video over here. Obviously, it's all a prediction and not facts, but you'll enjoy it. Check it out, guys. Get sure I bought the dip t-shirt, man. One one right now. If you guys bought the dip, I mean, right now, if you buy or if you bought the stock today by 2030, it can look like you bought the dip. Simple as that, guys. And don't forget to subscribe and I shall see you guys in the next video. See ya.